hopefully we'll have some more students joining so that we begin at the same time and don't have to go back to explaining the same thing. Oh, sorry. Good evening again. I don't know if we're going to have anyone else joining us, but I guess it's just 1908. I guess we can begin. I already hit the recording button. Okay, so. All right, stop. All right, so I think Yo. if my memory says okay. right, uh, from our last lecture, we I had said that we'll try and go through some, some questions together, isn't it? Some some exam questions on mass transfer on equimolar. Okay. Looks like equimolar decision. Okay, so here's one that I picked. This is a past question, exam question. Okay, and it says given a pipe containing a mixture of nitrogen, this is similar to the one that we went through together in our notes, but it's slightly different. Given a pipe containing a mixture of nitrogen and helium gases at 25 degrees Celsius, suppose the total pressure remains constant throughout the pipe at one atmosphere. 
again this did we look at this question together it looks familiar again this one no doc we didn't did, huh? you're sure we didn't huh? no no we didn't okay all right i continue suppose the total pressure remains constant throughout the pipe at what one atmosphere and at one end of the the pipe at point one the partial pressure PA of helium is 0 0.7 atmosphere. So it has two ends, the pipe has two ends. So one end of the pipe, we're calling it point one. Partial pressure for helium is uh, one atmosphere. Sorry, is the 0 0.7 atmosphere or the other end, which is uh, uh, 0 0.3 meters from the first point, the partial pressure is 0 0.1 atmosphere. So the length of the pipe between those points or the distance between those points is 0 0.3 meters. So one end has the partial pressure for helium at 0 0.7 atmospheres and the other end has a partial pressure for helium at 0 0.1 atmospheres. Atmosphere. If the diffusivity coefficient for the helium nitrogen mixture is 0 0.687 times 10 to the power negative four square meters per second, and 8.314 meters squared pascals per kilomole as the universal gas constant value. One, calculate the partial pressure of helium at point one in SI units. So basically we've been given for point one, the partial pressure has been given in atmospheres. So what this question is asking us is to convert it to the SI units uh, for pressure that we normally use, those being uh, Pascal. So we're basically converting uh, atmospheres to Pascal, which are few were three, three marks actually. And this question was carrying four marks. Okay, so the examiner of this question I'm not the one who said it, but he was requiring that students um, basically just convert that pressure from atmospheres to pascals. Okay, so how do we do this conversion? So we multiply and, you know, the, the examiner was very generous enough to give you the conversion, isn't it? So he was trying to tell you that one atmosphere is equal to 1.01325 times 10 to the power of five Pascal. Okay. He's already given you a hint. Huh? So already you had that conversion. So one atmosphere is equal to 1.01325 times 10 to the power of five Pascal, which is a figure that you need to know by heart. But this examiner was generous enough to actually even give it in the question. Okay, so you basically supposed to multiply that by 0 0.7 atmospheres. And the answer here is 7.0927 times 10 to the power of 4 Pascal. If I was the examiner, I was going to go further and say, leave your answer in megapascals or in gigapascals, for example. Uh, anyway, so we move on. Any questions on the conversion? No questions, though. Clear, the conversion factor was given. It's yes, clear. yes. It's clear. Okay, we move on. Calculate the partial pressure of helium 0 0.3 meters from point 0.1. No, just a uh, question, yes. Doc. Yes. Yeah, uh, I got so much interested uh, in the part where you said if you were that examiner, you would have gone further uh, uh, requesting for conversion to mega, is it mega? Mega pascals or giga pascals. Yes, yeah, so please, 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 let's just go through that together. Uh, that's your homework. <laughs> <laughs> that's your homework. Go and find out how to convert. So how many pascals make one mega pascal? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how many mega pascals make one giga pascal? Please research that. Just simple Google research, you, you find the answer. But one thing I need you to know also is that uh, uh, one, uh, one Newton per millimeter squared, so one N 
stroke mm squared. So one newton per millimeter squared is equal to one pascal. That's one thing that you also need to know. <clears throat> that we will find useful even in industry. Okay, so calculate the partial pressure of helium 0 0.3 meters from 0.1. So that is basically 0 0.3 meters from 0.1, that is 0.2. So you see how the examiner sometimes wants to confuse you. He will not just say you calculate the partial pressure for 0.2. So he's saying 0 0.3 meters from 0.1, which is PA2 in SI units. So the same thing, the examiner here is basically asking you to convert. Uh, that's PA2. So PA2 is given, isn't it, in SI unit. So it's asking you to convert 0 0.1 atmosphere to Pascal. Okay, so the same thing as you did earlier. So he already gave you this, hinted you with uh, the conversion units. Okay, so you're just basically multiplying 0 0.1 Atmospheres by 1.01325 times 10 to the power of 5 pascals, which in turn gives you that figure on the right in pascals. That's another, in my opinion, free uh, for, for max for that one. Okay, so let's look at the next question. The next question says, calculate the flux of helium at steady state showing all the units throughout. So here, you know the formula for flux. We looked at flux in our notes earlier on. We defined what flux was. Okay, so now let's look at how we find flux here. Okay, so what are the assumptions already? So if the question is requiring you to find the flux of helium at steady states, then the first assumption that is obvious that you are going to make is that steady operating conditions exist. Okay, then to make your calculations easier, it's easier to assume that helium and atmospheric air are ideal mm -hmm. gases. I think I mentioned this last time also to say that um, we this assumption makes our calculations even easier okay, to treat them as ideal gases. Again, this makes our calculations not very ideal for reality, isn't it? Because in reality, we don't really have uh, we don't really have uh, sorry, I got distracted. Geshom, are you trying to request to to record? Uh, yes, though, because okay. the idea is Okay, just please go to... ahead. Okay, just send the request again, then I'll approve. All right. I didn't understand, so I quickly closed it out without reading. Okay. All right, so the third assumption is that no chemical reactions occur in the tube. Okay, so you're assuming that that nitrogen and that helium are not, reaction, they are not reacting to form maybe, let's say, another compound or some compound altogether. So there's no reaction, chemical reaction that's happening between the two gases. And the fourth assumption that we're making here or that you have to make here is that air concentration in the pipeline and helium concentration in the atmosphere are negligible. Okay, so that air, so as the helium is leaving the pipe, remember there's some air, a small quantity of air coming in. So that concentration of the air that's coming in is so low that we are going to take it as negligible. So when we take that concentration as negligible, it means that the more fraction of one helium, oh sorry, of the helium is one in the pipeline and zero in the atmosphere and vice versa. The statement is also true vice versa for, for air also. So meaning for the air concentrated means inside the pipeline, air will be zero, okay? And in the atmosphere, air will count it as the more fraction equal to one. Okay, so this is the formula for flux that we looked at earlier on for gases, okay, for ideal gases. So we have the RIT there, okay, representing our constant, our gas constant. So JAB, that's flux. Okay, JAB, this is coefficient uh, diffusivity, it's given in the question. 
uh, partial pressure at PA1 minus PA2. So this particular formula is also in your notes. So DAB multiplied by a difference of PA1 and PA2, which are given in the question. R and T temperature is given, except this temperature you need to convert it to Kelvin if it's not already in Kelvin. And then we have Z2 minus Z1. So this is distance. Okay, so Z2 is 0 0.3. That's the length of the pipe. So Z2 will be 0 0.3, while the starting point will be 0 meters is Z1. Okay, so now facing that, this is uh, the coefficient diffusivity. Okay, multiplied by the partial pressure in Pascals. So remember, we converted this to Pascals in the earlier, the first two questions. So those are the values that you are picking for PA1 and PA2. We are not picking atmospheres. I hope I'm clear there. I'm picking Pascals because you basically have this in Pascals also. So for the Pascals to cancel out, you need that. And the Kelvins also to cancel out, you need to have your temperature also in Kelvin. So after the calculation of that, we get this as our final answer. 5.619 times 10 to the power negative 3 moles per second per meter. Any questions here? I'll just give you a minute just to look at the calculations and try and understand. Uh, I think uh, because we we already have these values mm -hmm. after after this uh, this lecture, we'll try just to to go through okay. now. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. No problem. The other thing that I needed to know from you is when is your residential starting? When are you coming on campus? On the twenty fourth of this very month. Twenty fourth. Yes. Okay. Okay. Do you have your timetable yet for classes? Uh, no, it's not yet been availed to us. Okay, this, so usually for lectures, is it one week or two weeks? It's, it's, it's normally, I think, two weeks. Two weeks, then we have uh, a week to do our, our CS. Then, uh, hmm? yeah. How long are you going to be on campus? It's almost a month, almost a month. Oh, it's almost a month, huh? Yeah, because when we come on the 24th, we're likely to to uh, to end everything like summer 18th of May. Mm, okay. Okay, then I'll probably send you your, your second assignment. All right, doctor. Look at it. Yeah, so I received, sorry, I didn't have a chance to individually respond to the emails, but I I would do so, so that in case, sometimes, you no, know, in case maybe there was an error with your scanning or something, so I respond to you right away so that you're able to correct that. So I'll, I'll try and find some time today or tomorrow to do that. So meaning I will send you your assignment too before you come on campus. So uh, hopefully, what's the day today? All right, Doc. This is six. So maybe if you can hand it in on the, I think it's something. Anyway, even during residential, it's fine. So that during residential, we're just going to have one test. All right, Doc. Yeah, so one All test right, and Doc. two assignments. One test and two assignments. Then exam, and that's it. Okay, we continue. Okay, so we continue to B, part B of the question. Calculate the flux of helium at a steady state using the atmosphere for pressures instead. So the first one is silent question. And then the second one is asking you to do the same thing, except this time you are using atmosphere for pressures instead.
So it means that now you are taking your partial pressures in atmosphere. Okay. What else are you doing? You are taking this value here. Okay, so initially you had it there in, in Kelvin Pascals per Kelvin, per, per Kelvin more. And this time you're getting it in meter, what's that? Meter squared atmosphere per Kelvin. Let me just refer to the question again. Okay, so what you're getting there is basically what this. So this, the examiner was generous enough to even provide for you how this looks like in atmosphere. So actually you're supposed to know this value by heart, but you're generous enough to actually even provide this uh, for you, for, for, for the students in a way to be able to, to be able to convert later, which made life much, much easier for those that understood the question. So you have that value already. So it's just a sim simply a matter of substituting it in your, in your equation there. Okay, and multiplying by Kelvin also. Your Z2 minus Z1 remains the same in meters. And after the cancellation, this is what you get here on this end. So it wasn't uh, a complex question. I think it was pretty much uh, a straightforward question. Let's see if there's one that we can start related to mass transfer in this particular paper. Okay, just give me a moment and try and uh, see another question that we can look at together. Let me get the other question. Okay, on another question, let me just quickly share it with you. Are you able to see the question? Yes, Doc. All right, okay. Can someone read it out? Anyone to read it out? Okay, question two. Mm -hmm. It reads attempt all parts showing all the working where necessary but a suppose the, there arises a situation where steady state equimolar diffusion takes place in a section of a pipe carrying natural gas methane that is a and ethane that is b the total pressure is 100 kilopascals and temperature 20 degrees Celsius. Suppose the partial pressure of methane at two places, two centimeters apart at 25 kilopascals and 15, uh, 15 kilopascals respectively. The mass diff diffusion is 1.6 times 10 to the power negative five kilomole per square meter per second, calculate molecular diffusivity, DAB for the system. Okay, calculate the molecular diffusivity, DAB for the system. So this one has given you everything else except molecular diffusivity for that particular system. Okay, so in this system, what do we have? A pipe carrying natural gas, we have ethane and methane. So methane is A and ethan is b total pressure is given and the temperature also is given at 20 degrees celsius 
Okay, so you're also uh, told to say that suppose the partial pressures for methane are two places that are 2,000 meters apart, I think 5 kilopascals and 15 kilopascals. I hope you know what kilo, how many? Okay, so if you convex 25 kilopascals to pascals, how many pascals is that? It will be 25,000 pascals stock. Yes, exactly. 25,000 pascals and 15,000 pascals respectively. Okay, so you've been given the mass diffusion flux. So in short, the J in the question. Look, remember the question we looked at earlier for flux? So the, in this question, you've been given the J already. The other question was calculating for J. We're given the coefficient diffusivity. But in this case, you're working in reverse. J has been given. So what you're doing is basically solving making uh, molecular diffusivity the subject of the formula. So let's see how the, the solution looks like. Okay, so that is what we have. So remember, this is what? Equimolar diffusion, isn't it? So when you refer to your notes, you'll find this in reference to equimolar diffusion, this particular symbol, Na. Okay, so what we're trying, what is being expressed here is basically that what's going, what's crossing over, okay, uh, that membrane going to the left. For every atom that's going left, sorry, going right, there's a counter atom that's going to the left, isn't it? If you remember that diagram, I think I explained uh, in our notes during our, our previous lectures, where we're saying with equimolar diffusion basically means with every molecule that's going the other side or atom or molecule, there's another one crossing on the other side. So this is basically what is being expressed here. Okay, so when you get D there, as a, I mean, a DAB, which is a coefficient diffusivity, uh, this is what you get also. So you have your Na over partial pressure multiplied by this. So again, in detail, you'll find the details in your notes. It to be more illustrated there. So this is the data that you have from the question. Okay, this is the data from the question. And then DAB, this is what we get from here, okay, after making the subject of the formula, which I suggest that you should do with so much caution because it's easy for you to get lost and put the wrong stuff in different places and that's how you end up now having the wrong answer. So everything rightfully placed, partial pressure there, we have it now at the bottom there. Then we have this here and that there. Uh, this becomes our final. And so if you notice, uh, the R here is in what? The constant, the R constant is in kilopascals also. And that's why here it's been maintained in kilopascals and those simply just crossed out. If you decide to put this in in pascals, then you also have to convert this to pascals for you to get a, a rightful answer. So you have to be very careful with the, the units, the SI units that you're working with in order to ensure that you do not uh, end up getting the wrong answer. <clears throat> So I think these are the sample questions that I can share with you that have to do with um, mass transfer. With mass transfer. So uh, for the other parts, which has to do with the uh, half-life, this one I'll give you as an assignment. This will be assignment two. So I'll give you questions like this that you're going to look at. So this is basically going to be your self study <clears throat> I'm going to give you two tests, but I think it's not, it's not necessary, but I'll just let you go through this particular topic by yourselves because I know you've covered part of this topic probably in your previous courses. And uh, I think I'll give you two weeks uh, to do this assignment so it will give you enough time also to look through, uh, to look through the topics. I'll also share with you a book that you probably could you would find helpful uh, in, in terms of uh, understanding uh, this topic. So for 
the half life and the rate of reaction that will come now as your assignments. So what does this mean? So this means that when we meet for a residential, it's probably going to be our last online lesson. When we meet for a residential, uh, we are going to go through these questions once more in preparation for the test and the exam. Okay, so we're going to solve this together. Okay, in preparation for your test and your exam. Prior to this, there's one assignment that is a class assignment that probably will have to do, going to form part of your assignment CAs. So this is where I'm going to split. How many are you in your group? We are seven, though. For seven, eh? okay. So seven. Okay, one group will have three. So I'll, I'll split you into two groups. So in those two groups, I'm going to give you assignments, class assignments that you're going to do within the class time, where you are going to look at different industries. Okay. So I think for you it's easier because you're already working and you're already in, you know, in industries. There are probably various industries, but I, this assignment I've particularly found it useful for our undergraduate students who do not have any industry exposure. So in those groups, you are going to look at different industries. So you look at, for example, detergent, uh, manufacturing industry, you're going to look at the processes. So you're going to have to now come up with design a system process, okay? Where you're going to include pollution control devices. So you're going to research on the parameter values for such uh, processes, okay? And I'll give you some values that you're going to have to analyze and where you feel that uh, they're exceeding the standards, you're also going to have to look at the Zema standards and compare. So where you feel those values are exceeding Zema standards, you're going to propose pollution control equipment that can be attached to your system process. And you're going to draw this whole thing in a diagram. Okay, and submit that as part of your assignment. So that one, so the results for that one will be attached to your assignment one. Then assignment two will be separate. I hope I'm clear. Yes, Doc. Yes. So I, in my opinion, it's a bit difficult for me to, for us to actually calculate these. Uh, you know, me giving you time to sit and calculate. Uh, I may not even monitor appropriately how you're doing it, but I feel we have ample time. We just need to make uh, use of uh, the, the residential time that will be here. So my days are packed. However, I'm free Thursday, Friday. If we can capitalize on Thursday, Friday, as well as Monday morning, then we're, going, we're good to go. There's not much left. So I just need you to learn how to design system processes be able to understand parameters and reactors. Uh, so we're going to do energy recovery also. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to split in groups, like I said. So maybe one group will have energy recovery, waste to energy recovery system, where you have a reactor, and you're going to have to tell us now how these parameters, uh, which parameters are important for that particular process, and which values are acceptable, what ranges, and if outside the range, what can be done to control those, for example. Uh, so when that is done, then I think we can go. So I think for tonight, I think we can end here. We can end here All right, with, me, with me uh, giving you the assignment, assignment two. Okay, and with you going through your notes one last time in preparation for class. Uh, so the notes also have some examples, some worked out examples. You can use those to practice. Then when you come to class, we shall do more practice uh, with uh, the various questions that involve calculation. So I expect you during this time also to take time to read through your theory because we may not concentrate that much on theory during, uh, during residential. Okay. Okay, Doc. Yes, Doc. Thank you. Thank you. So we, 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 we request if you can, we can send the uh, that book. Okay. All right. As well as so right away. All right, because my recording also here started a bit late.
So okay. the first part. All right. Uh, was, uh, did I send you last lesson, last lecture's recordings? No, we didn't receive. Unless others did. Huh? I didn't send this. In, I didn't share on YouTube. No, no, you didn't. Okay, so I'll try and share those ones also. Um, okay, let me start with the book. Let me start with the book, then I will. And tonight's lecture, I think it will be easier for me to send also. I think it's just one. Then I'll send you the previous lectures also. And then for me, for now, I think that will be it. Oh, yeah, then the assignment also will be sending you over the weekend latest. I should send you that assignment that you're doing to me. Okay, I guess we call it an evening. So in case, right, I, forget, Doc, in case I forget you. something, please remind me, okay? I tend to get quite busy and I tend to forget something. So in case I do not send you what I've promised you here, please kindly just send me a text on WhatsApp to remind me. All right, Doc. All right, okay. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you, Doc.